Hey there, you little fur ball of evil. Why don't you, uh, why don't you do one of those tricks that I taught you for the camera? Oh, that's right, you don't know any. Because you're dumb. You're dumb and you just sit there, you don't pay rent. You don't do anything. You don't do anything! Wait, whoa. What? Who? Okay, who in their right mind just leaves this here? Like, come on, seriously? Well, I guess we should unbox it. All right, this is the Corsair K95 RGB Platinum. And as you're all very aware, any gaming peripheral with the word Platinum in it is clearly 100% infallible in every way, shape, or form. But just to verify, we're going to be taking a closer look at it today and seeing all the new fun features that come along with it, because there are quite a few. And despite there being many similarities between this and the original K95 RGB, Corsair has taken a lot of user feedback to heart, made a lot of revisions that weren't so hot with the original K95 RGB, and fixed them with this board, as well as added some new features that you guys have probably never seen unless you were watching all the CES coverage on this particular model. So, with that said, should be a very fun board to check out. Mechanical, of course, uh, we've got some Cherry Mech Speed switches, which are currently advertised as being the fastest mechanical switch on the market. We'll take a closer look at that as well. If you're watching this video right now, which obviously you are, this keyboard should be available right now, worldwide in black, at the very least. If you happen to be living in North America, then you'll also have the option to get it in gunmetal gray. Uh, they may extend that availability to a worldwide release at a later date, but keep your ear to the ground for that. MSRP, 199 199 USD. That's not cheap by uh, by any stretch. So uh, we are talking about a high-end keyboard here that is pretty much cream of the crop when it comes to mechanical gaming keyboards these days. So whether or not it's going to be worth your hard-earned dollars is, like always, going to heavily depend on your needs as a user. In order for you to figure that out and decide whether or not you should buy this, we have to take a look at all those features first. So why don't we take this out of the box and have a closer look. So here's the keyboard plugged into a PC that I've got back there. You can see it kind of just defaults to this rainbow wave sort of effect uh, as far as the backlighting goes. And these are, of course, individually backlit. Um, you can customize each individual key per key lighting, so to speak. Uh, so that's really nice. Pretty much familiar with uh, what we've seen on previous RGB boards from Corsair. Uh, you can see they've actually enlarged the lettering, the cutouts on the lettering just a bit to allow more light to bleed through, which is really nice. It looks very, very bright and, and vibrant and all that sort of thing. The, the LEDs are not, the LED bulbs themselves are not visible whatsoever. It's a very nice, even and diffused glow. And also the aluminum chassis that we're dealing with here is pretty familiar for the most part, but there are some big notable changes. First of which being this light bar that kind of goes across the back end here and even kind of curves around to the, the sides of the edges there. Uh, this is really nice. It's actually got 19 different zones that are configurable and customizable within the Q software, of course. Um, and you can actually program those independent of the keys themselves, uh, or you can sync them all together. Uh, there's actually quite a bit you can do with this light bar um, in terms of just the different lighting effects, and we'll, we'll play around with those in just a bit. Uh, apart from that, you've also got this nice Corsair logo here, which has kind of a glossy finish, which I'm okay with because it's so small and pretty discreet, but that's also, you can see, backlit, illuminated with RGB lighting, of course. Now, one of the main revisions that I really like about this keyboard is that there's now only one column of programmable G keys, whereas in the past, the original K95 RGB had three columns, which for my needs as a user, it was just a, a bit overkill. Plus it added quite a bit of width to the, the profile of the keyboard itself, and was, and quite frankly, was one of the reasons why I never went with the K95 for my daily driver, because I have limited desk space. So this kind of gives you the best of both worlds there. They are fully programmable. You can do macros, you can launch applications. Um, they are fully backlit as well, just like the rest of the keys with Cherry MX speed switches and all that jazz. Uh, they do have this kind of gray textured finish. I, I don't mind the texture at all, but I would prefer them to be black just to be more cohesive with the rest of the keys on the board. In the top left corner of the keyboard, you get three buttons, one of which is your Windows lock key. You've also got brightness adjustment with four different levels of brightness, including off, which is nice if you want to go stealth. And then finally, you've got this button on the very left, which is new. This is a new addition. This actually allows you to switch between three different user-defined profiles uh, via the hardware. So there's eight megabytes of onboard storage. You've got a 32-bit ARM Cortex processor that's handling all the lighting effects, um, macros, all that sort of thing. So even if you plug this into a different uh, computer that doesn't have the Q software loaded up onto it, you can still have up to three user-defined profiles to switch between on the fly 
at any time, which is super handy. Moseying on over to the right side of the keyboard here, you've got your mute button as well as a new and improved volume knob. It does feel very nice to the touch. It scrolls and glides along with ease. And just beneath that, you've got four multimedia keys just like you had on the original board. However, these are raised. They're now a little bit elevated so that you just get easier access. Uh, I remember on the uh, on my K95, I'm sorry, on my K70 Rapid Fire, uh, which have the older style of multimedia keys, if I'm leaning back too far in my chair, the top row of number keys on the numpad actually kind of overshadow uh, the multimedia keys because they're just so low to the board itself and make them a little bit uh, less accessible than I'd like them to be. So that's kind of been solved here uh, with this raised sort of platform. Now due to popular demand, Corsair has brought back the USB 2.0 pass-through port, which is located right on the back of the keyboard um, next to the braided cable. It's a very nice, I believe, uh, six foot, maybe a six foot braided cable with uh, US two USB type A connectors at the end. Uh, one for the keyboard, of course, and the other for the pass-through port. Now, the pass-through port is very useful um, for things like connecting your gaming mouse or maybe even a wireless uh, receiver for your gaming headset. However, if you were wanting to connect a wired headset to that port, Corsair has you covered. They've actually thought this through quite a bit, always one step ahead, by including this kind of cross channel on the underbelly of the keyboard itself so you can route the cable directly underneath the board instead of having to just let it dangle and hang around up at the top of your keys where it could easily get in the way while you're gaming. So I might have to swap out my K70 Rapid Fire for this as my daily driver for that feature alone, if nothing else. Before I forget, there's also two fold-out feet underneath the keyboard with rubber pads underneath them to keep it from slipping and sliding around if you just want to give your board a little bit more of an ergonomic incline while you're gaming or typing. But the cooler thing that I want to talk about is the wrist rest here. This is a new and improved wrist rest. It snaps on very easily. Boom. It's That's it. It's, it's super easy. It's not a magnet or anything. It's a, just a latch mechanism, but you just place the keyboard down. You have to fiddle with it too much. Uh, taking it out is a little bit more difficult. You kind of got to like pull the... Uh, gotta like squeeze together the little, little the little latches. I do wish the latches were metal um, just to make it a bit more secure feeling when you are detaching it, but attaching it is super, super easy. Um, and the cool thing about this wrist rest, the other nice thing is that depending on which surface your dainty wrist prefers, there is an inlay here that's magnetic. You could just pop it out and either have a very smooth finish for your wrist or a more bumpy textured surface. Uh, so whatever your heart's content, there it is, again, perfectly magnetic, slots in really easily. I do wish there was like a little tiny tab just so you can kind of grab it and get an easier grip on it to peel it out initially. But uh, once you flip it and once you set it you're, you're, the way you prefer, it's probably gonna stay there for forever, <laughs> for the most part. Um, so I think the other thing that I wanted to mention before we dive into the software and just take a look at some of the RGB effects is the, are the, are the mechanical switches, of course. Um, it's easy to forget them because they're they're hidden most of the time. But uh, there there you go. They're uh, Cherry MX speed as I as I mentioned before. 1.2 millimeters actuation distance, 45 grams of operating force, and a crazy r ridiculous durability of over 50 million keystrokes. So this thing will be lasting you quite a while to say the least. Let's go ahead and jump into the software now and take this bad boy for a spin. All right, so here we are in the Q software. And really quick, I forgot to mention that this board also features N-key rollover and 100% anti-ghosting. So you nev never have to worry about uh, pressing too many keys at once. All those keystrokes will be registered, no problem. Uh, but here we are in the software. Looks a lot different than when I last used it about a year ago with my original K70 RGB. It looks a lot better. It looks more user-friendly. The UI looks gorge compared to what it used to look like. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's actually a lot more functional as well, easier to navigate, that sort of thing. So this is just a really quick, basic look. I'm not gonna go too into detail here. This could be, an, uh, this is a, really a video on its own, just the Q software. Uh, but some of the presets here, you've got about a dozen or so to choose from. Lots of variety. If you just wanna fire something up really quick, boom, doo doom, ba doom, ba doom, boom, boom, ba boom, ba boom, boom. Okay, type lighting, all the, all the good stuff. Uh, you've also got these three um, user profiles. These are the hardware profiles that we mentioned earlier that you can switch between using the button. A little onboard button on your keyboard. Isn't that nice? That's super cool. Uh, and also there is the advanced mode for all of you hardcore lighting effect users out there who want to just, you know, really tweak 
and uh, and tune your your LEDs to make them your own. Uh, I did fire up something right here. Here we go. Uh, this, this, I just whipped this up in a minute or two. Uh, these are just random effects that I applied with, you know, typical hotline colors. Uh, you can see that there's just a lot going on here. You can really um, make everything act independently of each other. We've got the G keys that are Caesaring out here in white. We've got a nice ripple effect in the middle here with kind of the teal and pink. Um, and then just a bunch of other things going on here. You can see the light bar also is doing its own sort of pulsing effect. Um, and I did want to mention that the Corsair logo here, that's just one of the 19 zones that also is sharing the uh, the top middle part, top middle portion of that bar. Actually, that's I got that illuminated right there. Should unclick that. There, that, that looks better. And finally, here's a quick look at all the different actions that you can apply to any of these keys. Not just the G keys, but any one of these keys on the board is programmable, guys. So uh, whether you're talking macros, um, text, remapping keys, media functions, launching applications, having a timer if you wanna give yourself some cues while you're in game, um, disabling the key entirely and profile switching. They're all pretty much any of these keys can do any of those actions. So pretty sweet overall. Let's go ahead and wrap this video out with some closing words. So to sum up my thoughts on the K95 RGB Platinum, in a nutshell, in my opinion, it is currently the best gaming mechanical keyboard you can buy for $200. Whether or not you should spend $200 on a keyboard is entirely up to you and dependent on, again, whether or not you're gonna use half of the features that this thing offers. But if you do have 200 bucks to spend and let's say you're upgrading from a $50 crap keyboard that maybe has membrane keys that's just way too old and outdated and in need of a change, then this is a very good option that will probably last you a super long time. I always tell people, if you're gonna buy an office chair, spend a lot of money on it because you'll be using it every day. The same goes for your keyboard. However, that being said, if you already own like a K70 or K95 RGB, it's probably not worth upgrading to the Platinum because there's just not enough new stuff to make the investment worthwhile. But again, if you're coming from a potato keyboard, this is a fatty upgrade that's going to last you a very long time, and I'm sure most of you guys will be very happy with it as well. It features a super solid build quality and quite frankly, one of the most, if not the most sophisticated software for keyboard in terms of both macro programmable functionality and lighting effects, if you're into that sort of thing. So those are my thoughts on the K95 RGB Platinum, guys. Let me know in the comments whether or not you agree and feel free to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. That's all for now, y'all. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. And I will see y'all in the next video.